In this project, I'll show you how to train an image recognition model using Google's Teachable Machine and import it into a Scratch program so you can make your program react to objects detected on your webcam. Start by going to teachablemachine.withgoogle.com in your web browser. Click on Get Started, select Image Project, and then select Standard Image Model. This will open a new project in Teachable Machine. First, you're going to need to create classes for the different objects you want to recognize. We'll be using recognizing models of different objects in space as an example. So I'm going to call my four classes Satellite, Space Debris. I'm going to click Add Class here to add another class. Call that one Meteoroid. And then finally, I'm going to add a class for nothing. Next, you need to add image samples for each class. You can either do this by uploading photos from your computer or recording a bunch of images as sequential frames with your computer's webcam. So if I click the webcam button, your browser may prompt to allow it to use the webcam while visiting this site. And then you should see a feed from your webcam in the Teachable Machine window. Now, I am going to hold up the object that I want to train or collect images of, which in this case is a little Lego brick model of a satellite I made. And I'm going to click the hold to record button to record images of the satellite. Now, when I do that, I am going to move my head out of the way so my head isn't in the image. And the main thing close up in the frame of the picture is the satellite. So I'm going to move away, click the hold to record button. And as I do that, I'm going to rotate the satellite around so I get a bunch of images of it from many different angles. I'm then going to release the record button and you see that I've recorded 171 image samples of my satellite. I am then going to do the same thing for each of my remaining classes. So I'm going to go down here to Space Debris, click Webcam. Note that you can click this gear icon to change the settings. For example, if you want to turn Hold to Record off, then you can click once to record for a fixed duration. So for example, if I turn that off, Click record six seconds. Again, I am going to move mostly out of the way of the camera and hold up my piece of space debris, which is this crumpled piece of aluminum foil. So I will click record, get a two second delay, hold this up in front of the camera and rotate it around a bunch to get it from different angles. And it will automatically stop recording after six seconds. So I went ahead and did the same thing for my meteoroid class where I was just holding up a rock as a model meteoroid. And finally, you might not want to do this for every project, but I am also going to add a nothing class where I am not holding anything up. So this is just going to be me sitting here and maybe moving my hands around a bit, but I am not holding anything in my hands. It's just my head. So after that, I have all four of my classes. I have added image for the images for them and I am ready to train my model. So there are some parameters you can change here if you expand the advanced menu and you can click the little question marks to read more about them. But we are just gonna run it with the default values, click train model, and Teachable Machine is now going to train a model that can recognize the objects in each of your different classes of images. This might take a few minutes, and it might give you a warning that you need to keep this browser tab open, so don't switch to another tab. You need to stay here if you want the model to train. It'll give you a little progress bar on the screen, so wait until that completes, and you will then see the output of the model over here on the right. You can now test your model right here within Teachable Machine, so you should see a live feed of your webcam as long as you have the input turned on along with a bar graph below it showing the probability that each object class is currently detected in the image. So right now I'm not holding anything up and it says there is a 100% probability that this is nothing. But if, for example, I take my piece of space junk and hold it up in front of the webcam, you can see it's not perfect, especially as I move the object around towards the perimeter or farther away because that is not really similar to the training images that I took, but if I hold it up right in front of the camera, like I did for most of my training images and rotate it around, you can see I have very good prediction, pretty much a 100% chance that this is the space debris. And I can repeat that 
with different objects. So here holding up my rock as a meteoroid or my satellite in front of the camera. And it's doing a pretty nice job identifying these objects as long as, again, the way I'm holding them up is similar to my training images where they're pretty close to the camera. It gets less accurate when they are too far away. So that is something you are now going to want to consider you can add more images and retrain your model. There are other things to consider like your background. So I have a very messy background here, but you could aim your webcam at more of a blank wall so you have a nice clean background. You can make sure to keep yourself out of the frame. So my head was usually in the frame because I was trying to stay close to the microphone that I'm using to record this video because if I go too far away out of the frame, as you can hear now, my voice gets very quiet. So there were different reasons that my images weren't totally clean in this video, but that's something, again, you might want to consider when you're making your training images. You can always just go back to any class and record additional videos, or you can, sorry, additional images, or you can delete the existing samples if you don't think they were good enough and start over. So if you're not getting good output from your model here when you're testing it, go ahead and try recording or adding more images and retraining your model. But if you are happy with the output of your model in Teachable Machine, you are ready to move on to the next step. At any point, if you want to save this project, you can click the menu over here on the left and click Save Project to Drive. You can then save this and start another one if you want to do a totally different model for recognizing different objects. But assuming you now have the model you want to work with in this tab that you're going to use in Scratch, you are going to click the Export Model button and then upload shareable link. Make sure that option is selected and then click upload my model. You might get a notification that it is uploading. This could take a minute or two, so give that time. But then when it is done, it is going to give you a shareable link here that we are going to copy and paste into Scratch. So go ahead and copy that link and open a new browser tab. We are, we are now going to import your trained teachable machine model into a Scratch program. In your new browser tab, go to playground.raise.mit.edu slash main. This is going to open a blank Scratch program, and we are going to add a Google Teachable Machine extension that allows you to import your trained Teachable Machine model. So go all the way down to the bottom left corner of the window here and click on the Add Extension button, then click on the Teachable Machine extension to add that to your program, you will see you now have a new menu option over here on the left with blocks for Teachable Machine. So for starters, we are going to write a very simple program that just loads your Teachable Machine model and turns the video camera on so you will see the feed from your webcam in the Scratch stage here. So go ahead and click on Events, drag out a when green flag clicked block. I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see the code more easily. Go over here to Teachable Machine, drag out the use model block, and you're going to paste in that URL that you copied in the last step. And then we're gonna add a turn video on block. So when I click the green flag and run this program, it's not actually gonna do anything yet, but it should turn on my webcam and load my Teachable Machine model. If you try this and your webcam does not turn on, you may be running into a conflict between your different browser tabs trying to access the webcam at the same time. You see in my tab up here, I have this little red circle icon, which indicates that my Teachable Machine tab is still using the webcam, so you can try turning that off and then running your Scratch program again to see if the webcam turns on. If it doesn't work, you might need to close one or more browser tabs or restart your browser. So again, if you need to do that, make sure you save your Teachable Machine model first and get that export link so you can then copy it into Scratch. So as you can see, I now have my webcam feed working in Scratch. I didn't realize that I also still had the webcam going over here in the class for Teachable Machine in addition to the output, so I had to turn both of those off, and you see the little red circle goes away, and Scratch is now happy with using the webcam. So now you are all set up, and what you do with the program from now on is entirely up to you. So for example, I could write a very basic program that's just going to make the sprite say the name of the detected class. So I'm gonna go here to Control. I'm going to add a forever loop, and in that forever loop, I'm going to add a block 
from looks that just says say. And then I'm going to go back down to teachable machine and drag out a model prediction block and snap that into the say block. So what this should do is load the model, turn the video on, and then forever it's just going to make the sprite say whatever class is detected. So that's similar to doing what teachable machine was doing with the output here at the bottom, but now I am doing it in scratch. So when I run this program, it is initially saying nothing because I'm not detecting any of the three objects I trained, but if I hold up a satellite, you see that it switches to satellite because Scratch, again, has imported this teachable machine model, which is telling us which of those four classes it's detecting, and I can then use that information in my program. Now, this on its own is not doing anything other than just saying the name of the model prediction in this little text box, but for example, if you've done Scratch programs or games or animations before, you could change this to make the sprite react somehow to the different objects. For example, again, in this case, I'm using detecting objects in space as a motivation or an example for why you would want to recognize different objects and maybe recognize how dangerous they are. For example, if you are on a collision course with another satellite, maybe the other satellite is capable of adjusting its orbit or moving out of the way, but something like a piece of space debris or a meteoroid is not, so you would need to move your satellite out of the way to avoid a collision. You will see that there are some other blocks available here in the Teachable Machine module. So for example, a very simple way that I could program making the sprite react and move around the screen is adding this when model detects select a class block. So I could say when model detects satellite and then go up here to my motion blocks and say, I want to move to a location, say positive 50, positive 50 for X and Y. But then I'm going to duplicate that and say when I detect space debris, I want to move to negative 50, negative 50. So moving to diagonally opposite corners of the screen depending on what I detect. So if I hit the green flag again to run this model, initially I'm detecting nothing, but if I hold up a satellite, it's going to move up there. And if I hold up my space debris, it's going to move down there. So I'm now making my sprite react and move around the screen based on what it detects. You can save your work in Scratch by selecting File Save, and if at any point you want to use a new or different Teachable Machine model, you can start a new program and paste in a different link. You can go back to Teachable Machine, and again, remember that you can save or load different models or add more images, retrain this model, and then re-export it and copy and paste a new link so you can improve your performance or test different models. If you try this project yourself, let us know how it goes in the comments. Remember that you can find written instructions linked in the video description. And as always, you can find over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering on our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.